Okay, today we're going to talk about our AD expansion module with Minion Enterprise. Now this is one of our favorite modules, and it's actually one of our flagship modules, but it's just a sample of some of the really cool stuff that we're doing in this product. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So right here, we've got our collector logins current view, and this is the last collection of all of the logins in your entire enterprise. So we've got 779 logins that that we have across all of our SQL boxes in our entire enterprise. Let's just go ahead and round that up to 780, right? So you can see how much information we gather here. We don't only get all of the, the login information, but we get some stuff here that that is really hard to come by, like the last bad password time, the number of bad password attempts. We get uh, the last password set time. So we get the date last modified. We get whether it's locked or expired whether it's disabled you can also see here that we get the password enforcement stuff as well and then we get the the access type the login access type so we get a lot of information on the logins themselves now let's take a look and see how many sys admins we have so across our entire environment we have 142 sys admins and you can see there that's across all of the boxes right you can see that server name column right there that's across all of our boxes so now let's look at a single box. We're going to look at the MinionCon box right here. And you can see that we've got all type, all login types. We've got SQL logins, Windows users, asymmetric keys. We've got Windows groups. You know what? Let's look at Windows groups. So here are all the Windows groups on this one server. We're not really interested in most of these, right? But what we are interested in for the purposes of this demo are the sysadmins. So now I'm just going to narrow that down to the information I'm interested in. I'm not interested in all those other columns right now. But you can see here that I've got four Windows groups that are sys that are sysadmin on this box. And you can see that two of them are services. One of them is clearly the, DB, the DBA group. But then I've got this budget SQL group, and I have no idea what that is. Let's go ahead and investigate and see if we can find out who's in, in that group. So let's just let's take a look at our... 80 group member table and we pull all of this stuff in from uh, from AD and you can see here that we've got users and groups so here I've got groups as well these are empty groups right here but I do have some groups that aren't empty look at all the information that we're getting here we're getting the last logon and this is all AD information we're getting this directly out of AD we get the last password set the last bad password attempt date right we also get all of the email address, the, the phone number, the distinguished name column, we get the display name, we get the GUID, we get, uh, we get all of this cool stuff, we get the SID. So you know how sometimes this can be really helpful in SQL sometimes when you see those, uh, those disassociated user accounts where all you get is the SID? Well here you can look it up and at least see what it was supposed to be, right? So okay, so you can see that we get a lot of information here. now. One of the reasons why that we get all of this information is because of one of our tenants. And one of our key tenants is collect everything and report on everything, right? So we have no idea what you're going to want to report on. So we give you everything we can find, and then we let you choose what you want to report on. We don't, we don't choose just the top five or six or ten out of 70 items. If there are 70 items, we take all 70 items. So now let's just narrow it down to just this one group we're interested in. Here we go. So you can see this one group has all of these users in it. So 55 users down here are in this group. But look at this. Some of these users are subgroups as well. Now who's in those subgroups? That's what we're trying to find out because what we want is we want a list of everybody who has SA on our box. And so far we don't have it. We've got a list of users that are directly in the group, but there could be subgroups inside of each one of these subgroups. These groups can be nested several deep. So now let's go ahead and run this SP, the report AD accounts in SQL by server name. Because again, we're just interested in this server name right now. I'm going to put the results into a temp table because it pulls back everybody. So all I'm interested in are the sysadmins. So I'm going to pull them in a temp table and then select from that temp table so that I can look at just the sysadmins. This will only take a second or two. 
There we go. Now the fully expanded groups, you can see here that I've got the group here and I've got all of its users. I've got this group and all of its users. So now I've got 173 users that have SA just on this one box. And that's my full list, only coming from the Windows accounts. Let's go ahead and look at this from a holistic standpoint. Instead of looking at it here by server, let's look at all of the servers in our organization. And this is where the real power of Minion Enterprise comes in, being able to do this kind of investigation across thousands of servers. So let's go ahead and run this one. This will take a couple extra seconds because you're getting everybody and not just a single server. There we go. So that's 423. So we went, we went from, what was it, 173 to 423. Now this is everybody that is coming in as SA, right, as SA into one of our boxes from a Windows group. So you can see this hits all of our servers. Here, I'll highlight the server column, and you can see that it's hitting all of the servers here. So I can see everybody, and then when I get an audit, I can just highlight this, I can highlight that, and I can just send that to the auditor if I want to. Or I can put this result set in SRS and have the auditor go look at it themselves. There are a number of things we can do. And you can tie this in with other data as well. You could tie this in with application data. Um, you can tie it in with production data and say, I only want the prod boxes. Or you can say, I only want uh, the boxes for this application. I only want the boxes that are in Dallas. I only want the boxes that are uh, 2012 and above. I only want the boxes that are 2012 and enterprise that belong to this application in the prod environment. There's no end to the different ways that you could that you could put this data together. You can get as fine grained as you need to. Now that we've got that, I haven't deleted the I haven't deleted the temp table. So let's go ahead and add back in our SQL account info so that now we get a full list because that remember that was just the windows accounts so now let's go ahead and add in our sql accounts actually no nope, sorry this one is we're just getting a count now of all of those in that temp table sorry i got ahead of myself there and so you can see here that these two servers have 173 windows users in the SA group while the rest of them only have a handful. So if I were gonna if I were gonna do a security audit, I would definitely start with these two servers first because something big has gone wrong here. Um, I doubt very seriously that you want that many people to have SA on a single server, much less on two. I think all of these others are a lot more reasonable. Now let's look at the Windows groups that have the most users. So we're just kind of we're just kind of uh, poking around. So now I can see which groups are causing the problem from that previous from that previous screen or from that previous query. I can see that it's these two guys that are causing the problem. So this budget SQL definitely has way too many users and we need to do something about it. Now let's add in our SQL data. And I'm just joining the same data. I'm just loading into that temp table. I'm loading in the exact same uh, login data that I had before only now I'm picking SQL logins alone so now let's merge our two results there we go we have 474 people in SA across our entire enterprise and that's Windows users and uh, SQL users so that's an awful lot now we can see how many of each type exists this is kind of the same query we ran before except now we're getting it by by group type on uh, on each individual server so now I can I can uh, slice that data that way and see which ones which which ones are going to be the worst on on each individual server now that's the investigation part part from the top down so that's showing you for your entire environment how many of a certain type of login do you have on this box or on this type of box or across everybody but now what if you wanted to investigate an individual user? This is an interesting use case here, and it's a lot wider than I'm going to explain here, but I'm going to explain one use case. Let's say that you have one user. We'll call him eGant. And let's say that eGant has access to a number of servers, and we're not really sure how he's getting in because there are so many Windows groups coming in. Um, 
and he belongs to so many different groups that we're just not sure. We haven't been able to decide where he's getting his access yet. So from here, we can work our way from the user out to the, the enterprise. So what we're about to do is I'm going to show you how we follow this user and show you not only how many SQL boxes he's got access to, but exactly how he gets access to each one of them. So let's go ahead and run this guy. There we go. So you can see he's got access to this many boxes. And here we show you the full chain of his AD permissions. So you can see that he belongs to Budget SQL directly. He also belongs to it from the corporate, from this corporate uh, group. But he's also coming in through this HR group. But he's also coming in through this sales and marketing group. But he's also coming in from this finance group. And he's also coming in from this IT group. So he's got two, four, six different ways that he's getting in through this group. So if you just, if you were in AD and you took him out of this group, hoping to get rid of his permissions on this box, you would have to remove him from all of these other groups as well. So you can see how how incredibly useful this data is to be able to chase something down like that. You can look down here and you can see how deep our chains can go even. Let me double click on this and move this aside a little bit. So down here on this box, you can see that he's getting in ultimately through the Absolution Users group. And it's and that's even the top of the chain. But look at the chain. He's getting into Absolution Users from this Solutions TGF. And he's getting in there from this Health Entry CSR. And he's getting in there from Disable USB Drive. And he's getting in there from Legal Group. And then you finally get down here. So we follow his chain, his AD chain, all the way up. So it's not just enough to know that he's getting in through this group. You also need to know his entire chain. So maybe he's maybe he's got access to one of these subgroups that he shouldn't, and that would take him out of the chain entirely. So this is an incredibly useful feature. We're thrilled to give it to you because this is something that we've been needing as DBAs for a very long time. And I'm not going to run this one, but it's the exact same thing with groups. So you can run this against an individual user, or you can run it against uh, an AD group as well, and it'll, and it'll show you that chain for that AD group as well. So we've got a lot more functionality in Minion Enterprise, but we're thrilled with this functionality, and we hope you like it too.